if I do well, that's the only thing that counts. If I did well at the competition, then I was a good person and I was on the right track. If I'm the one measuring success, it was kind of an end all be all. So you'll walk, you'll sit down, and then you'll just look at camera for like five seconds. This is just okay. Oh wait, that's the where I talk, right? Because <laughs> I said I'm Giulietano and I'm a professional big air and, and slope style skier. Yeah. Okay. So wait, which one am I? This one is. Is that good? Okay. I'm Giulietano and I'm a professional freestyle. S oh no, sorry, slope style skier. Good. Okay. I'm Giulietano and I'm a professional big air and slope style skier and World Cup winner and X Games winner. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Julia coming in right now. When I was younger, I didn't really have much fear. They were like, just try this, just try this. And I was like, oh, not scared. So I was like, okay, <laughs> I'll try this and that. I got like to a certain level pretty quick. And then was allowed to like ski in the World Cups pretty quick as well. I kind of had some tricks where I just knew that I'm gonna do well. Four X Games medals, several World Cup podiums, two World Cup wins, and I have the uh, Crystal Globe in bigger. But you're pretty much on the top of the sport, like at a very young age. Yeah, it's hard to like keep that up, like since the level uh, started to going that crazy it's like I want to still do well and sometimes with that I put a lot of pressure on myself that was kind of like the beginning of started to get injured more and what were the injuries oh that's a lot <laughs> humerus on the left side I broke my ankle and tore my syndesmosis broke my other humerus pretty badly I did my ACL and MCL how is it this oh my wrist my collarbone what else <laughs> my hand broke my hip dislocated my shoulder I feel like all those injuries like back to back to back is something that I feel like is kind of feels like failure. I failed by crashing and <laughs> my leg failed by <laughs> breaking and um, you know, failures on, on many levels. Being totally afraid of failing, of crashing, of not being able to ski my line, just of not doing well. So what that ended up doing for me is that I felt a lot of pressure at the events because I was scared to fail. Yeah, and then they, they were just like in the wrong wrong timing which is really unlucky but I was really like on top of my level and doing so well in the competitions I feel like everyone was kind of like expecting me to do well at the Olympics and I myself was already like kind of seeing myself like there and like doing well That was hard. Yeah, like I was in a really bad state. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, as you see, it's like still hard for me to talk about that one. Just because, I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. It was just like so many, uh, expectations and from like myself and everyone and 
I struggled for a long time with that because it's like the topic that everyone talks about. It seemed like for people that's the only thing that mattered. So yeah, I always felt like because I didn't go, it's like the rest of my career is not valid. And I feel like especially when you're injured, that sometimes gets hard to stay at home and watch everyone ski. Sometimes people don't realize how much like goes into a rehab or like how much it does with you, like also in the mind. I felt like if I make the Olympics and if I do well there, like that's the only thing that counts. In the four years between those Olympics, I had like really learn that it's not the only thing. It doesn't define me. I had like some of the best times like in all those other competitions or if it's like a filming week with someone or just like skiing with my friends. I felt like I started to value those things way more. Big deal for Julia here today. Coming back and getting a medal especially. Like even when I qualified, I was like, okay, you're only there when you're there. You don't think about it too much. And then there was just a small mistake and I knuckled. Like I knew it straight away. Like my knee just exploded, my ACL is gone. And yeah, that was really hard, but in a way it kind of helped me that I've been through the experience already. Just knowing what I've got back from gives me a little ease in like, okay, you've been through all that already. What's almost harder this time is that it's like such a long injury. My arm was not that long. It was like three or four months. It was just in a bad timing, but then my knee is like, you just know it's six to nine months and you know that you're missing skiing for that long. When you're like, taken off skis for that long you're just like way more motivated again you just want to not take the time for granted kind of opened my eyes a little bit in like what's important to me and I think the main thing for me is just the love for skiing which sounds super cheesy but I don't know I just after every injury I've had so far like the day I skied again or like the day I got back into the park, it was worth it. And I think that's what keeps me going. Nine months of rehab or whatever, like it just, it's just worth it to me. For sure in the beginning of my career when everything went super smooth, I didn't really know failure yet. That's, I think that's why it hit me even harder. I felt like the, all the results and like everything is the thing that defines me and that people respect me more if I'm like doing well or like, I don't know, maybe like me more. Because I had attached my identity and my self-worth to the result. Like if I did well at the competition, then I was a good person and I was on the right track. And once I shifted my mindset from outcomes to the process, I understood that mistakes are so valuable because it gives me amazing feedback. So I started learning that there is no failure, there is only feedback. It would have been nice if it wouldn't have had to be this lesson, but but now that I kind of been through that much, I think it's just part of the process. Whatever happened that day, even if I crash, I'm going to be learning and growing, and that is what I have set out to do in the first place. It's not a nice feeling, but I think in the end it's still like needed in a way. Not only as an athlete, I'm not just talking about skills, I'm also talking about growing as a person. Like learning to push out of your comfort zone, learning to take on more, um, learning to deal with big emotions like fear and failure and all those kinds of things. This is not going to last forever, like you can't do our, our job forever. 
at some point your, your body will not take it anymore. So I really try to appreciate everything more. If I'm the one measuring success, if there are no wins and losses and podiums and things like that, look at yourself and not see so many flaws or should have beens or could have beens, but see like, whoa, you know, I did this, you know, and take that time to when you accomplish something, when it feels good, like sit in it for a moment and just feel it. It's just like stay in the moment and like really think about what I'm doing now and not thinking about where I'm supposed to be in a few months. Just stay in the present and try to do the best you can in that moment. I feel like that's what's most important for me.